thankful for this opportunity here at the end of the week, work week, to be with you on this Friday. And today I'd like to go back to the Old Testament to chapter 60. Darkness is always a difficult situation unless we're sleeping and we want it dark. But if we're trying to do something and we need light and we don't have it, it can be dangerous. It can be scary. Uh, there's a lot of different things that can occur. But the minute the light turns on, ah, we can see. We know where we're going. Uh, we have less fear because we can manage the situation. And the whole set of circumstances have dramatically improved. A lot of times as believers, we are affected by the darkness of this world. We know in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that Satan is blinding the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in. He's causing there to be darkness. In fact, in Colossians, we talk about how we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Uh, we now live in the light and we should walk in the light. We see in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Speaking of the coming of the Lord Jesus, my friends, when God shines the light, the darkness has to dispel. Darkness cannot stand the light. And so there's a couple of things we can take away from this thought. First of all, personally, we need to live in the light. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 5, we are told to walk in the light so we can have the fruit of the light, the spirit in our life. We don't want to walk in darkness. When we're not right with God, when we're not in the Word of God, when we're living selfishly, when we're living with fear and frustration, we are in darkness, and that's when we stumble. Uh, that's when we run into problems. Uh, that's when we have fears in our lives, and that's tragic because God's not given us a spirit of fear. We need to be with, in that open relationship with the Lord where we can see, we have wisdom, we can discern, and light is just flooding our soul. So it doesn't matter what's going on around us, there's light. But we also need to realize that God can turn on the light at any time and do a great work of dispelling darkness if God's people are interceding. But you can't have people interceding for light who are not walking in light. That's why we need individuals who are living in a revived state so they can understand the need of the darkness of the day and be pleading with God to do a work and God can turn that supernatural light on. It's amazing. Churches can be totally different when the light is on. Families can be different. Communities can be different. And I think we need to get back to believing that God can turn the light on in different places in which God has placed us, if we will seek him, if we'll be the witnesses we ought to be, if our church will have the testimony that it ought to have, and if we're willing to intercede and really believe God to do that kind of work. And so let's walk in the light so that we can stay encouraged and know what God is doing. And let's pray that God turns the light on in our own community and even in this country I believe we've got to stop uh, with the fatalism that I hear so often. Yes, we may not politically turn around, but we can see a move of God where the light of truth permeates the darkness of this world. We need to pray to that end and be the kind of instruments of light that God can use.